In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to convert color pictures to black and white using Adobe Lightroom CC 2018. A few years ago, I made a similar tutorial using Lightroom 5. The reason I'm making a new one now is that Adobe has made some changes in the way that black and white conversions are done in Lightroom. At the beginning of April 2018, they introduced a new, uh, a new update to Lightroom CC, which introduced um, new profiles for black and white conversions and moved around some of the locations of some of the controls in Lightroom that we're going to use. So I thought now would be a good time to make a new tutorial showing how to take advantage of these new features. The first thing we want to look at is profiles. In the older versions of Lightroom, including Lightroom CC up until this new update, profiles were way down here at the bottom of the list of all the controls down under calibration. Um, I always thought that that was a terrible place for it because that's really the first thing you should set when you're working with a file in Lightroom. And this is true whether you're working with a color picture or whether you're doing a black and white conversion because the, color, the profile that you choose affects the color rendering quite a bit in a color picture. And if you're doing black and white, of course, it's uh, necessary for that too. In the older versions of Lightroom, the default profile was Adobe Standard. Well, now it's called Adobe Color, and Adobe Standard is still there. You can choose it. From what I can see, the only real difference is, is that the new Adobe Color profile gives a little bit more contrast. And then you have choices for Adobe Landscape, Adobe Portrait, um, and Adobe Vivid, which just give you a little bit different color renderings. Now, none of those are important for what we're doing here, because we're going to do black and white conversion. And you see one here that says Adobe Monochrome. If you click that, you get a black and white conversion. Now, this picture looks, it's black and white, but it looks really flat. It doesn't have good tonality. It's very gray down looking. Um, it doesn't have any deep blacks or, or bright light, white turn, bright white tones. Um, the mid-tones especially are very flat and gray looking and don't have the kind of contrast that they should have. Now, if we look at um, the profile pull-down menu, we see there's an option here that says Browse. If you click that, or if you click these little rectangles right here, it opens up the Profile Browser. And you see that there's actually a lot more profiles available to choose from than what are in that menu. You see the standard ones that were in the menu, um, ones that are tuned to the spe specifically to your camera. If you put your mouse over them, you see the change appear on the screen so you can compare them. There's some new stuff like these artistic ones, and from what I can see, these really whack out the color, and I think what they're trying to do here, many of them remind me of cross-processing, which was a, a color film processing technique that was popular. It was a real fad back in the late 1990s when I was in art school. Cross-processing is basically taking a color film, like, say, color slide film, and then processing it in the wrong chemicals. So you would process E6 slide film in C41 process chemicals, or you would take C41 process color negative film and process it in E6 chemicals. And they give you whacked out color when you did that. I think these are trying to emulate that sort of look. To me, they're not per particularly useful since most of my work is more straightforward documentary work. Um, then we have black and white choices and then below that there's modern and vintage. I think the vintage color choices are trying to emulate old faded pictures in color. The modern ones I don't really get. Most of them I think are just too high in contrast and ugly looking but you know maybe you'll disagree if you're doing color work and want to check them out. What's important for us is the black and white ones and I wish that Adobe would give some more documentation on what the differences between all these different profiles are. In some cases, it seems to be differences in contrast or brightness, but others seem to have differences in how different colors are rendered. When you, when you shoot black and white, let's say you're shooting black and white film, you're photographing the real worlds in color. So anything that's colored is going to be converted to a gray tone based on how light the object is. And sometimes things don't look the same in black and white as they might have looked in color because you might have a picture with two colored objects next to each other that are very different in appearance and color because they're not the same color. But when you photograph them in black and white, they might end up being the same gray tone because they're the same brightness. 
And the same thing happens when you convert a color picture to black and white in Lightroom. And Lightroom gives you the opportunity to change the color sensitivity of the conversion so that some colors can be lightened or darkened relative to the other colors in the scene in order to make things stand out from each other the way they would have when viewed in color. And I think that some of these profiles are rendering the color conversion differently from each other, but without any documentation of telling you what exactly is being done, you kind of have to just look at them and see if one of them suits you. Um, now, if you scroll down a little further, some of them are labeled with with labels that give you some idea of what they're doing. Like this one says black and white blue filter or black and white green filter or yellow filter. What these are doing is they're emulating the effect of using a colored filter on the lens when shooting black and white film. When you use a colored filter over the lens with black and white film, anything that's the same color as the filter will be lightened and things that are the opposite color on the color wheel from the filter will be darkened. So if you're shooting with a yellow filter over the lens, anything that's yellow is going to be lightened quite a bit. Things that are blue are going to be darkened. Um, things that are close to yellow, like red and orange, will be lightened a little bit, but not as much as yellow would be. And the same thing happens with the other colors. Orange filter is going to lighten orange stuff. It's going to darken stuff that's the opposite, like blue. Um, red filter, whatever, they, they all do the same thing. They lighten their own color and they darken other colors. Um, I don't really like using these profiles like this because they're kind of um, they're kind of inexact in their control of what colors are lightened and darkened. And Lightroom actually has controls that let you have more fine. Um, how would I want to say this? They 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 give you more precise control, and we'll get into how that works in a minute. The black and white one control seems to be a fairly straightforward conversion. And I think that's usually the best one to start with, either that or just using the Adobe Monochrome, which seems to be pretty similar, but just a little bit darker, at least with this picture. So once you've chosen the profile that you want to choose, now one other thing too with the profiles is some profiles, and the Adobe Monochrome one is not one of them, but if we go down to the black and white profiles and choose one of those, some profiles have an amount slider up here that you can adjust the tonality with. And I think that it seems to mostly affect contrast. Going up increases contrast, going down decreases it. I prefer most of the time just to leave it at the 100, which is the default place, because there's other controls in Lightroom that give you finer control over contrast and tonality that I prefer to use, and that's what I'm going to teach you to do. So once you've chosen a profile, and I'm going to choose the Adobe Monochrome one to start with, because I think it's generally the best starting point. Click Close, and we see the profile is chosen up here, Adobe Monochrome. Now, if we go down here, we see that there's controls for things like highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, dehaze, contrast, and exposure. Exposure lets you control overall brightness of the picture, but you have to be careful with this because if you push it up, you're not just increasing the midtones and shadows, you're also pushing white tones up too high where they may be pushed over the edge and end up being blown out. So I don't like to use this unless you have an underexposed picture. If the picture wasn't exposed properly, but there's but the midtones or whatever look a little bit too dark, there's other ways to do that. So usually I leave this at default unless I have a picture I know was underexposed default being zero. Now this picture's overall brightness is okay so I don't think we need to do that. What we want to do here is we want to increase contrast in the midtones. Now if you use the contrast slider that increases overall contrast and we can see how the dark areas are really losing detail here. They're getting pushed down to the point where they're just pushed into pure black. That's not good. I don't want to lose detail in those areas. And lighter areas like this are getting pushed up to where they're too high, where they're going to lose detail also. So the contrast slider is really not the best way to increase midtone contrast. What we want to do is increase the contrast in the midtones without pushing the lights too light and the darks too dark. And there's a way to do that in Lightroom, and that's with the clarity control and the dehaze control. Clarity seems to mostly increase midtone contrast by pushing it upwards. And we can see how the midtones are getting much less flat. When we push it up, 
starting to see more differentiation in tones where more detail starts appearing in the bricks here because it's not so flat and gray looking. But at the same time, we can see our dark tones here are not going too dark. They're still showing the same detail they had before. And our light tones haven't really changed much either. Now the next thing is dehaze. Dehaze seems to mostly affect lightening and darkening in the midtones, but not a contrast increase or decrease. And it also tends to darken the darks a bit too, but not as much as using the regular contrast slider. So if we increase this, we see it's darkening our midtones. It's darkening the darks a little, but you can still see we're keeping our detail here. It's not really pushing them down as harshly as the contrast control did. And by using a, com a combination of the clarity and dehaze controls, most of the time you can, you can bring out a really beautiful tonality in the picture, like I've got here. And I love how the midtones are rendered here. We got really good um, rendering of these bricks. We can, say, we can see we've still maintained detail in this yellow colored sort of little awning like area here. Um, our darks are, maybe they're a little too dark, like this shadow here could use a little more detail, these shadows up here in the windows under the awning. And so what we can do now that we've got our overall tonality right, is go up here and we see highlights and shadows. These are the two that are going to be the most important. What these do is these allow you to recover lost detail in the highlights of the light tones and the shadows, which is the dark tones. So if you have dark tones like our shadows that have gone too dark, you can push them up with the shadow slider and you can see how these areas are brightening up. Now when you do that, that does affect other tones a little bit, but not, not as much as if you would lighten the overall picture. And I might increase the uh, dehaze amount a little bit to darken our midtones back when I use the shadow slider. And by doing this, we are still getting more detail in the shadows than we had before, but still keeping our midtones looking good. Now maybe the lights are a little too light. Maybe we might want a little bit more detail in these areas. So we can highlight you or use the highlight slider for that. And you you want to be careful with this not to pull it down too much because you can really flatten out and destroy the image if you pull it down too far, but usually pulling it down 10 or 20 points depending on how much too light your your highlights are, you can bring back some tonality in these areas. Now another thing you can do too is you can use the tone curve here. And this works the same way that curves do in Photoshop. And if you're not sure how curves work in Photoshop, I have a video tutorial and a written tutorial on that both. The video tutorial is on my YouTube channel and the written tutorial is on my website, crawfordphotoschool.com. And basically the idea is you can, you can click a spot on the, on the curve which starts out as a, as a diagonal line. The middle areas of the, of the line represent your midtones. The upper areas represent your highlight tones and the lower areas represent your dark tones. And so you can lighten or darken certain parts of the tonal range by using these. So if you grab the midtone and lighten it, you're kind of overall lightening the whole image but with emphasis mostly on the midtones. It has less effect on... You can see the highlights here haven't really moved that much and the shadows haven't moved that much but the highlights have moved. And I kind of like how this looks when it's darkened down a little bit. I felt like these bricks were just a little bit too light, and these are kind of a middle-toned area. And you can see we still have full detail in our shadowed areas. We haven't lost those. If they do go a little too dark, we can always push them up a little more with the shadow slider. Now something else you can do too, and I don't think this is appropriate for this picture, but you can also, you can pull up the highlights and pull down the shadows to increase contrast overall. We would basically do the same thing as the contrast slider but gives you a little bit more fine control. By using the curves you could increase the highlights more than you decrease the shadows or, or vice versa if you want to have more fine control over it. You can also decrease contrast with the curves by pulling the highlights down and raising the shadows up. 
But like I said, if you want if you want to know more about curves, I do have a separate tutorial on that. And curves can also be used with color photographs for color correction because you can control a curve for each of the three primary colors too for color correction as well as an overall curve for the brightness and contrast of the whole image. But I think that the results I've gotten here look really nice. I like how this is how this has turned out. Now there is one more thing I want to show you that I don't know if it's, if it's really necessary for this picture, but you may have other photographs where you need to adjust the relationships between different colored objects, how they've rendered into black and white. As I mentioned earlier, there are some situations where you may have two objects in the scene that look a lot different in color because they're different colors, but they end up rendering the same shade of gray in black and white. And that can be a problem if they're right next to each other or like one's in front of the other where you want them to you want them to be separated from each other tonally. It's also useful for things like darkening blue skies if you want to darker if you want to darken in the blue sky and make it look like you had a deeper blue sky um, in black and white. And how that works is if we go down here below the curve, we have the B and W controls. And you see there's all these colors listed here and each one has a slider. And what you can do is you can lighten or darken everything in the picture that's a certain color by manipulating that color sliders. So if we look at um, this picture in color, we see we have a blue sky and there's some clouds in the sky. Now if we go back to our black and white version, we can see the blue sky is rendered as kind of a medium, slightly dark gray. Now let's say that we want the blue sky to be even darker. We can grab the blue slider and we can pull it down and look at that, it darkens the blue sky. Now it's going to darken anything in the picture that's blue, so you got to be careful. If you've got other things that are blue in the picture that you don't want darkened, you may not want to do this. But our picture here of the bookstore, this is Hyde Brothers Books in Fort Wayne. It's a really awesome used bookstore that I've been shopping at since I was a kid. Um, there really isn't anything that's blue in this picture except the sky, so we can do this without really affecting much else, because if we manipulate this slider, we can see that most of the rest of the picture is pretty much not changing. And we can do this with any color that's here. Now our bricks are kind of a, they're kind of a yellow brick color in the original, in the, in the color picture. So if we wanted to affect them, we could, we could darken them or lighten them. And we can see it's also affecting this area here because this is yellow also. And you got to be careful with that because by lightening it too much, we could be, you know, lose detail in this area that's it's also yellow. But you can do this with any of these colors that are listed here. So if you've got things in the picture that you want to lighten or darken of a certain color to make them stand out, you can do that with these controls. You just need to make sure that you're careful that you're not affecting something else in the picture that's the same color that you don't want affected. Uh, what should I do with my blues here? Should I leave it at the default or should I darken it? I'll darken it. I like that. Makes the building stand out more. So I think this is a pretty perfect conversion right here and that's how you do it. Um, choose a black and white profile. I think the Adobe Monochrome one is, is for the most part going to be the best starting point for most of you. And then once you've chosen that then you can go through here and use the tonal controls. Start with the clarity to adjust your mid-tone contrast and then um, then work with the dehaze one and if necessary bring in shadow detail and highlight detail with the highlight and shadow sliders if you need to bring those back and you can use the curves if you want to lighten and darken or fine tune the tonality and the black and white mix controls let you adjust individual color renderings now there is one more thing in the black and white mix that I didn't mention and that's the auto button if you click this it, the Lightroom will make its own decision about where these sliders should be moved and sometimes that works pretty well. Sometimes I click that and I think, oh, this looks terrible. I sh shouldn't have done that. But there's other times I really like the rendering it gives. And it's worth trying, because if you don't like it, you can always undo it. So let's click it and see what we get. For the most part, it doesn't look that much different than what I had before, except it's lighting the sky back up. But let's go over here to our history list and let's undo that and see what the difference is. Yeah, it's lightening up the yellows a bit, and it's, and it's uh, 
I mean, it's darkening the yellows and, and lightening the sky. I'm sorry, I didn't wasn't paying attention there. I think uh, I think that I like my I think I like my settings better than the auto. But you can you can try it and see. If you don't like it, you can always undo it. And then once you've got all this stuff set, once you've got your black and white tonality, then you can do the other things you have to do in Lightroom, like adjusting your sharpening settings, which these are still at the default. I haven't adjusted them. If you need to do things like um, correcting for distortion or um, doing the uh, perspective transformations, and that's something I'd want to do with this one if I were going to finish the picture, because you can see that the top of the building is cur is slanted inward because I'm looking up. And usually I try to correct, correct that so that everything is square. And I do have another tutorial online showing how to do that, so I'm not going to get into that in this video because that's will take another 20 minutes to explain how all this works. But if you're interested, I do have a video on how to do you, how to use the transform controls to do perspective corrections. So those are all things that I would do after I got the black and white tonality set right. And once I had everything the way I wanted, then I'd export the picture, and we're done.